Hello everybody, my name is Shane. This is my first YouTube video ever, so please don't hesitate to let me know how I did in the comments. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. The Ankaraz patch is now live on all servers, and with it comes one of the most daunting challenges Classic WoW has to offer. To gain access to this new content, both factions collectively will have to participate in a server-wide world collection event, requiring the turn-in of massive amounts of trade goods and profession materials. In addition, one person on each server will have to complete one of the longest quest chains in World of Warcraft history to date. Being the first person on the server to complete the quest chain awarded that character the title of Scarab Lord, and anyone else who completes the chain during the following 10 hour world event will receive a Black Karaji battle tank mount. This video will detail the whole quest chain and guide you through the long, arduous journey to become Scarab Lord. Before we get started, I'm going to do the regular YouTube thing and request your viewer support. I worked hard on this video, so if you like my content and would like to see more of it in the future, go ahead and like it and subscribe to my channel. The Scepter of the Shifting Sands questline consists of 32 quests and is going to be very time consuming. It takes you across a vast majority of Azeroth and requires you to complete tasks in both of the full size raids already released in Classic. To complete it, you're going to need the support of your guild as well as a lot of time and dedication. Here is a shopping list of some items that are required for the quest turn-ins throughout the chain. You can buy these on the auction house if you'd like, none of them are soulbound. The first quest, What Tomorrow Brings, begins in Silithus at the Cenarian Hold. Speak to Barristolth of the Shifting Sands, this guy is your bro, and one of the main quest hubs in this chain. Upon accepting the quest, you will be marked as hated with the brood of Nos Dormu. To complete the quest, go to the Caverns of Time in Daenerys and approach Anachronos. Once near him, the quest will be updated as complete, and you can return to Barristolth of the Shifting Sand. For his next quest, Barristolth will ask us to return to him with the head of a familiar raid boss. Head into Blackwing Lair with the full raid group and defeat the third boss of the instance, Broodlord Lash Lair. Once he's dead, retrieve the head from his corpse. Only one head drops per kill, so make sure to communicate with your group ahead of time if you want this item. When the head is in your bag, return to Barristolth and Scenario and hold. Now, we begin the reputation grind portion of the quest chain, and it is a long one. After turning in the head of Broodlord Lashlayer, Barristolth will give you a follow-up quest called The Path of the Righteous. When you take this quest, you will be given an item called the Agent of Nostormu Bad. Having this item in your inventory allows you to loot Silithid Carapace Fragments from most of the Silithid mobs in the Silithus Zone. To complete this quest, you will need to turn in 200 fragments to bear Assault of the Shifting Sands. This will give you 200 rep with the Brood and an item called Proxy of No Storm. Using this item will deputize another character as an agent of No Stormu alongside you and give them a copy of the badge directly in their inventory. They can now receive Carapace fragments as well. Make sure you choose your deputies wisely, they should be someone who is helping you complete the quest chain. Once completed, this quest becomes a repeatable quest called the Hand of the Righteous that you will need to do numerous times until you get neutral reputation with the Brood of Nostormu. You, along with the help of your deputies, will need to collect immense amounts of carapace fragments and turn them in 200 at a time for 200 reputation and another proxy of Nostormu, adding another person to your support group each turn. If you're wondering how much that is exactly, you're probably not alone. To get to neutral status with the Brood of No Storm, you'll need to have a total of 42,000 reputation. Thanks to the quests you've completed so far, by the time you deputize your first partner, you should have 500 reputation already. So you'll need to obtain 41,500 more rep. Which means you'll need to turn in Hand of the Righteous a total of 208 times. This will require the turn in of 41,600 Carapace Fragments to continue in the quest chain. Once you're neutral with the Brood, we can finally continue our journey. Barristolf will have one final quest for you to complete. Pick it up and head to Daenerys to meet with Anachronos, and turn it in. You can also speak with him at any point from now on to select one of three epic rings and get a small reputation reward. The next quest starts at Anachronos and will send you to Silithus to interact with a small red crystal found on the ground near the Scarab Wall. Turn the quest into the Crystalline Tier and grab the follow-up quest from the small red gem. This will start an event giving some backstory about the Gate of Ankaraj. Don't wander too far or you will have to restart the event. 
Once the event is over, you can return to Anachronos at the Caverns of Time to turn in your quest. You will then receive a quest called The Charge of the Dragonflights, where Anachronos will tell you some backstory about the dragons that came into possession of the shards of the scepter we seek to create. Once you're done speaking with him, turn the quest in to continue. This portion of the quest chain consists of three different branches of quests, each rewarding you with a colored scepter shard quest item. Once you have all three shards, red, blue, and green, you turn them into Anachronos to receive the scepter of the shifting sands. You can get the shards in any order you choose, but I've decided to present them in order from easiest to hardest, but there is no strict linear order you must complete the quests in. The first shard belongs to someone most of us are very familiar with. Veilstraz the Corrupt in Blackwing Lair. Gather your raid group and head into the raid instance. Before starting battle with Veilstraz, speak with him and pick up the quest Nefarious's Corruption. Accepting this quest will start a 5 hour timer. You must kill Nefarian before your timer has run out. Once you do, he will drop the Red Scepter Shard, bring this item to Anachronos to finish the quest. The next shard is in the possession of a member of the Green Dragonflight. To get the quest, we'll need to embark into the temple of Atalhakar. Approach the final boss of the instance, the Shade of Aranicus, and Malfurion Stormrage will appear. Accept the quest from Malfurion. This quest will ask you to travel to Teldrassil and find a Forest Wisp, located just outside of Darnassus, north of the pass between Darnassus and the mainland. This is going to be much easier to complete in an alliance, but is required for Horde to complete the quest chain as well. The Wisp will have a follow-up quest to travel to Moonglade and seek out Keeper Remulos. He is located west of the lake at the Shrine of Remulos. Speaking with the Keeper will give you the quest The Nightmare's Corruption, which requires you to travel to four Emerald Dream portals located all over Azeroth and collect a Fragment of the Nightmare's Corruption at each. You will need a group of players for the first three portals. They are guarded by tough elites, and a full-size raid group for the fourth portal in Dustwood. To get the first three shards, simply travel to the Emerald Dream portals located in Ashenvale, the Hinterlands, and Feralis. The shard is roughly an 8% drop chance for any of the dragonkin surrounding the portals. The fourth shard from the Dustwood portal will require more effort. Gather your trusty raid group and head into the Twilight Grove in Dustwood. Entering the Twilight Grove while on the quest will cause the Twilight Corruptor to spawn by the Moonwell on the northeastern side of the grove. Defeat him and collect your final fragment. After collecting all four fragments, return to Keeper Remulos in Moonblade. Once you pick up the next quest, there will be some dialogue from Keeper Remulos. Then he will walk up to the nearby Night Haven. Shortly after he steps onto the wooden platform, an event will begin. You will have to defend Night Haven and the quest NPCs from waves of nightmare phantasms. This unit casts Shadow Bolt volleys and has a chance to fear on every hit. After a few moments, phantasms will stop spawning, and Iranicus, Tyrant of the Dream, will land and engage in combat. Your raid group will have to bring him down to low health, somewhere around 20 to 30 percent, for Tyrande Whisperwind to cleanse him of his corruption. However, be careful, killing Iranicus will make you fail the quest. Once he is cleansed and your quest is complete, return to Keeper Romulos to receive the Green Scepter Shard. Now you can head back to Anachronos and Daenerys. To obtain the third and final shard of the scepter, we will need to visit yet another dragon. The spirit of Azurgos can be found in the southern regions of Azhar. Speaking with him will give you a magical ledger, which when used begins the quest line. The first order of business on our list is to bring the ledger to a gnome found north of Steam Weedle Port in Daenerys, named Narain Sud Fancy. He will give you a quest you can immediately turn back into him. Afterwards, he will have three quests for you to complete. All three must be done for you to get the shard. We'll start with the shortest of the three. This first quest sends you to Grey Main Wall in Silver Pine Forest. Once there, you'll need to find the inconspicuous crate near the gate to Gildnaeus. Speak with the crate to turn in your current quest, and pick up another called Scrying Goggles, no problem. This quest will require you to find Narain's Scrying Goggles, a white item that drops from many sources in Molten Core, including trash mobs, all bosses, and even the chest after Major Domo. Once you've collected the goggles, return to Narain's Soothe Fancy to complete this section of the quest. 
Pick up the second quest from Narain and head over to the nearby town of Gadgetsen. Inside the inn is a goblin named Dirge Quickly. Turn in your quest and pick up another from Dirge to collect 20 Chimerock Tenderloins and Lac Maron's Carcass. This is where the shopping list I gave you at the beginning of this video will come in handy. These tenderloins can be gathered in advance and can also be bought or traded from other players. Gather a group of 5 players and head to the Isle of Dread, which can be found off the coast of Pharaohs to the west of Dyrmal. Here you will find Chimerok of different varieties and their Lord Lachmeron. Once you have collected 20 tenderloins and the carcass of Lord Lachmeron, return to Dirge and get it. Next, Dirge will give you the quest Dirge's Kicking Chimerok Chops. To complete this quest, simply hand in 20 deep rock salt and 20 goblin rocket fuel. If you purchase your shopping list, you're prepared for this and can quickly turn them into Dirge. He will give you his recipe for the Kicking Chimerok Chops and have one more quest to pick up. Grab the quest from him and he will give you the 500 pound chicken. Now simply return to Narain Sooth Fancy with the bird and turn in the quest. To complete the third quest Narain has for us, Draconic for Dummies, we need to head south to an island far off the coast of Tenaris. There, you will find a pile of freshly dug dirt you can interact with to turn the quest in. Getting to this island, however, is not as easy as it sounds. To do this, we'll need to find a Naga NPC named Meredith the Mermaiden. She can be found in the waters off the southern shore of Tenaris. Speak with her and accept the quest Love Song for Narain. She simply wants you to deliver a letter to Narain Sooth Fancy. After the delivery, return to Meredith to receive a buff called Siren Song. This is a 3 minute buff that increases your swim speed by 150%. You can use this to swim to the island where you will find the pile of freshly dug dirt. Interact with it to turn in Draconic for Dummies. Then pick up the following quest and the Ransom Note from the dirt pile. Return to Narain in the northeastern Tenaris when you have the note. For the next step, Narain will give you Narain's special kit, which is a bag that contains four items. His robe, his turban, a crude map, and a bag of gold. Head to the Ransom location indicated on your map. You can find it in Winter Spring here. Once you have arrived at the drop spot, use the turban to make yourself look like Narain Sooth Fancy and drop the bag of gold at the end of the path overlooking the cliff. At this point, you'll have to fight number two. He's a tough gorilla, but has no special mechanics. He can be kited, so some classes can solo him, but most classes will want to bring a tank healer and a DPS with you. Once the ape is dead, return to Narain. The next quest, titled The Only Prescription, will require you to collect eight pages and bind them together with the provided magical book binding the pages are scattered all over Azeroth. Chapter 1 drops from a gnome named Dr. Weevil on an island off the east shore of Dustwallow Marsh. He hits hard and will probably require a small raid of players to defeat. It may be possible with a group of 5 players, but you should probably bring a few more to be safe. Chapters 2 and 3 are drops from demon mobs found in the world. Chapter 2 from Demons in the Tainted Scar in the Blasted Lands, and Chapter 3 from Demons in Dark Whisper Gorge in Winterspring. These both have a low drop chance, so be ready to kill a lot of demons. Chapter 4 is picked up from a table in the Undercity in the Magic Quarter, and Chapter 5 can be picked up from a table in Stormwind in the Library of Stormwind Keep. And I'm sure it goes without saying, but it's going to be really difficult for you guys to retrieve the page from your opposing faction city. Chapter 6 drops from the Anixia Raid boss, only one will drop at a time, so be sure to be the one to get it in your group. Chapter 7 is picked up from a table in Blackwing Lair. It's found in the room past Blue Blood Lash Lair near the Alchemy Lab. Chapter 8 is a drop from Ragnaros in the Molten Core. Once again, only one will drop at a time, so be careful. Once you have all the pages, use your magical book binding to obtain Draconic for Dummies Volume 2 and return to Narain Sooth Fancy. The next quest will require you to gather the remainder of the items on the shopping list provided at the beginning of this video. Turn them in to complete this quest, and pick up the follow-up. When you do, you will receive an Arcanite buoy. Head into a jar with a raid group of 20 plus people and be ready to battle. Use the buoy in the large fishing pool out in the Bay of Storms. This will summon Maws. The fight is pretty much a standard tank and spank, but it does have an enrage mechanic, so make sure to bring a hunter with you. 
the blue scepter shard will drop from the boss, loot it and finally return to Anachronos. Anachronos has one final quest for you, grab it and speak with him one more time to receive your reward, the scepter of the shifting sands. The hard part is complete, head to Selethus and ride south to the gates of Ankaraj. When you arrive, interact with the gong to get a quest titled Bang a Gong. You can only obtain this quest if the Scarab Gate is not yet opened on your server. This is the quest that rewards you with the Black Karachi Resonating Crystal, and can only be completed by players who receive the scepter and complete this questline during the 10 hour war event that begins when the first person bangs the Scarab Gong. An NPC appears beside the gong after his first rung on a server. This NPC will provide anyone who rings the gong with a quest to turn back into him and receive their choice of one of the following epic weapons. Seriously, congratulations to anyone who completes this question. It's enormous and requires a serious amount of dedication and effort. Thanks for watching you guys. I had a lot of fun making this video and learned a lot in the process. I did everything myself from writing the script to editing the video getting the footage and finding all of the resources online. So if you enjoyed it and want me to make more in the future, please show me some support, like the video, send me some love. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night.